Hey, everybody. How you doing? This is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team. And we're going to talk more Java tonight. I'm here with Chad Arimura uh, from California. Chad is the VP of uh, Developer Relations in Java Engineering. And uh, so there's a big conference coming up tomorrow. And, 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 that's what we're going to and that's what we're going to talk about. Chad, how you doing? Welcome to the program. Jim, thanks for the Japanese pronunciation of my last name. Yeah, I was actually practicing the Western pronunciation and it just wasn't rolling out there. So, uh, <laughs> um, and I also thank you for the microphone. That is a beautiful microphone there. <laughs> Much better well, than mine, actually. Everything is virtual now. So, nice. And I spent quite a bit of time getting this thing set up. It does. It does actually take a little bit of effort to get this stuff working locally. So, um, all right. So there's a big Java conference tomorrow. It's been planned for a little bit. It's called Oracle Developer Live Java. Uh, last month, they talked about database. This month, it's Java. Next month, they're doing MySQL. And after that, it's cloud. And that wraps up for the year. So you're one of the leaders for this, uh, for this event tomorrow. And um, so let's start off by talking a little bit about this conference. What's up about this thing? Yeah, the Oracle Developer Live Java Edition Conference is, uh, as you mentioned, one in a series of technologies that we're doing here at Oracle. Uh, the Java Edition is one that we take a lot of pride in um, because it is a continuation of the Moved by Java series, um, which is the, the theme that we've been celebrating the 25th anniversary of Java. So this is a, uh, the 25th anniversary of Java, which we kicked off in May. And this is the second event in that series. And we have a jammed pack, a jam packed schedule for uh, both events uh, on the 15th, which is tomorrow, uh, and uh, the 17th for uh, EMEA. And uh, we're really excited because we have some really great sessions planned. Yeah, actually, I was looking at the sort of the speaker lineup and what was really great about it is, you know, there's, you know, you know there's some partner companies there, there's some community people, I see Venkats there, um, mm -hmm. and a, a lot of engineers, a lot of engineers from the, uh, you know, from the JPG, uh, you know, I, so from the engineering organization. And um, so this is going to be a tech heavy conference, huh? It is, yes. Um, we take pride in the content of our conferences. And so just a little bit about my role, um, I run the developer relations team in the Java engineering group, as you mentioned. Uh, and this is the group that uh, builds Java. So this group has, um, you know, a lot of people on this group have been working with Java for nearly the entirety of Java's existence. And so some of the world's foremost experts, architects, language developers, language designers, uh, JVM engineers all work inside the Java platform group um, under George Saab, where he also has sustaining and Q&A and testing uh, and security and, um, you know, just pretty much everything on the entire Java stack. And so my group is, is responsible for the developer relations. So really um, engaging the community, engaging the market, talking about all the things going on, working closely with the team uh, and, um, you know, trying to figure out all of the interesting things happening inside the platform and then telling the market about it. Um, and so we're doing a lot of content like this, um, events like this. Um, and so the reason I kind of give you that, that pre, uh, um, prelude is that, so tomorrow is featuring many of the experts on the team who are actually building this stuff. So for example, right. um, we have Stuart Marks talking about collections. You know, he's uh, um, one of the core guys in charge of building collections. Um, and we have, um, I think you interviewed Michael Wiechtet about uh, JK Flight Recorder. Um, and so that's a session put on by Michael himself. Yep. Um, and then you mentioned Ben Cat, who is um, a, a prominent thought leader in the, in the industry. He doesn't work for Oracle, um, but we have worked with him in the past. He was on a panel with us back in May. Um, and so, you know, some the, these sessions are sort of led by the people who are, who almost know these things inside and out, the deepest uh, thought leaders in each of these specific categories. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. These online events, um, they've been hard to pull off because they're new, um, but we're now eight months into this you know, era now, but so things are improving. Um, but one of the things I've noticed is there's uh, some of these online events is uh, there's a lot of activity. In other words, there's a lot of Q&A. There's a lot of people who definitely want to have the interaction because they can't be there live anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So while they have you on the screen, um, you know, 
you, I mean, there's a lot of questions, there's a lot of interactions. And um, I've noticed that in, in all of the events recently, there's always a, um, you know, hands-on lab, you know, component. So it's not simply, you know, session, slides, Q&A after that kind of thing, but there's interaction um, in some of these, in some of these online labs. And I've been pretty impressed actually, because initially when we started this, I mean, how do you do an interactive hands-on lab through a computer? I mean, hands-on labs are literally hands-on. You're, so you're behind a screen, you're hacking together, you know? Um, but it seems to have worked out pretty well as I think people are motivated to make it work out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it is a, a brave new world that we're living in. Um, and it's a challenge to, you know, I mean, I get, I'll be the first to admit that being in front of people is part of why we do what we do. We love being at conferences. We love interacting with developers and the community. Um, you know, seeing the reaction of the audience when you tell a joke is, was it good? Was it bad? Was it crickets? You, you <laughs> get none of that feedback back. Are people engaged? Are they listening? Uh, it's a very strange sensation being on the other end of, uh, of a virtual conference. Um, but we're working really hard to make sure that we keep uh, the audience engaged. Um, the format is you know, very specific to virtual online conferences. The hands-on labs, we're spending a lot of time to ensure that we have uh, a way to engage with the, each of the, um, the, I guess that we call them students that would be part of the hands-on lab or the attendees of the lab. Um, and so we have some exciting labs planned. We have one about building Java applications on the Oracle cloud. Um, we have one focused on Micronaut, um, one focusing on modernizing uh, web logic with Kubernetes. Um, and so those labs, you know, don't miss them. We've got experts in each of those areas um, focused on those. Um, and then the sessions will have, you know, of course, Q and A, and and will be, you know, many of the speakers will uh, will be available after the talk to be able to engage the audience, and uh, we'll really do our best to try and make it an interesting conference. But, you know, at the root of it is, even without the direct human interaction, we still have a lot of things to talk about. Um, so, as as many people know, uh, the launch of JDK fifteen is happening tomorrow um, on the 15th. And so this represents the sixth release of Java in the new release cadence, which has been a six month release cadence. Wow. Uh, so and it's we not so new anymore. About. It's not so new uh, anymore at this point. Yeah, it's, I guess it's not new. I would say the uh, updated release cadence. Um, and so we just have a, a, a really um, interesting, uh, well, Java has a lot going on. And so every six months we have great stuff to talk about. Yeah, that's what I actually wanted to bring up next because I've been, you know, whenever I talk to anybody in Java recently, um, I'm just noticing just from a lay perspective on the outside looking in that, you know, things seemed noisier. Things, I mean, you can hear it now. You can see more now. There seems to be just more fluidity, more stuff on social. Um, I'm on the mailing lists, you know, sort of lurking. Um, I really enjoy the project and discussions. There seems to be more projects recently. Um, I don't know if it's more so much as just it's more activity. It just feels like there's more activity. Um, I know recently uh, the Java team just uh, finished the migration from Mercurial over to Git, which is I'm sure was a non-trivial event. Um, but the feedback I've heard just, you know, secondhand has been, you know, it went well, uh, which is, which is really, really good to hear. And um, there's, you know, Project Verrazano, that's something new. Um, and so there's, there seems to be some interesting things going on. Do you, are there any Maybe projects or things that you would like to highlight, just uh, you know, a couple of them that we can see in Java 15. Well, Java 15's got a bunch of cool stuff. Um, I think first and foremost, uh, there are a number of new preview features coming out. Um, some things that have been experimental or preview that are now being uh, standardized. Um, so, for example, the uh, ZGC Z garbage collector is part of Java 15 release, and that's been experimental. So you've had to use uh, the experimental flag in order to use it, um, but it is ready to go. And so if you're not familiar with EGC, there's sessions on that. Um, I'm not sure if you had a chance to interview Perlinen, but uh, um, it's all about scalable garbage collection um, with low pause times. So talking sub 10 milliseconds at very large heaps. So terabytes of heaps. 
uh, of Heap. And, you know, the world is sort of changing quickly. We've got AI ML workloads, we have big data, we have lots and lots and lots of data that we're working with. Um, and that, that is a challenge for a traditional garbage collection where you have really, really large heaps. And that's where ZGC uh, comes in. So it's another tool in the chest for, for Java developers. Um, we have, um, what else do we have? Foreign Memory Access API is, is a second incubator. Um, and that's part of Project Panama. So another, you know, how, how do we decide what goes into a release? Um, well, first of all, generally it's what's ready will go in um, because we're now on a, a time-based release cadence as opposed to a feature-based release cadence. But how do we prioritize things? Um, we generally work in um, what we call projects. So there's innovation projects that are ongoing and they aim to think about the challenges that, that developers have today and that developers will have 5, 10, 15 years into the future. Uh, and these are areas of research and innovation we're thinking about all the time. And then some of those are now delivering features into the language and some of them are longer term innovation projects. So, you know, you mentioned what's exciting. Well, Panama is one of those things that um, is starting to deliver, um, which is aiming to make Java much easier for Java developers to interface with native code. So traditionally developers had to use something like JNI, which is pretty difficult. Um, and so Panama is sort of a, a, a project aimed at that. Um, and then we have Project Loom, which there's an entire session tomorrow on, on Project Loom. Um, and that's making concurrency uh, simple again. Um, so by introducing something called uh, virtual threads, which are really just threads, um, but you can spin up tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of them. Um, and you can get uh, a lot of concurrency at our Java application without having to resort to, you know, trying to code in async or reactive. Um, so there's a lot of excitement and anticipation around problem as well and then there's a there's a bunch of other ones you can view them all at openjdk.java.net or you can go to inside.java yeah, and <laughs> click on tags and you'll see all of the projects listed there and you'll see content that's been produced by the team uh easily categorized um, but the last one i'll mention is, is amber which a lot of developers are excited about because amber is a an ongoing release of um development uh or developer facing language changes, which aim to improve developer productivity. Um, so things like text blocks, switch expressions, um, and uh, local variable type inference. Um, these things have either been released or going into uh, another preview. Text blocks, I think, is becoming a standard feature in 15. Um, and these, these all work nicely together to reduce the boilerplate of Java, reduce the ceremony, as we like to call it, um, but also make the language more expressive, make it uh, less places for bugs to hide when you have to write less code, make it easier to read also, because generally I think code is read six to 10 times for every time it's written. Um, and so we're moving quickly um, and there's a lot of good stuff coming. Okay, good. So my impression was accurate then. <laughs> <laughs> that things are yeah. moving. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad you mentioned, actually, incidentally, I'm glad you mentioned inside.java because um, when you guys launched that, I was really, really impressed because it's just clean. It's just a clean interface. You can get to the information. There's nothing in the way. There's no graphics. It's just, it's just slick. I, I really, really appreciate that. Um, all right. So you've got a lot going on. Um, this is a huge conference tomorrow. <laughs> And then again on Thursday, and mm -hmm. also in the middle of that, you're releasing the next version of uh, Java. But before we go, um, I was wondering if you can give me a little bit um, of sort of insight about, you know, what drives you? Um, you're sort of in the developer relations business. You're talking to developers and customers all the time, mm -hmm. developers at customers. Um, and, and, you know, uh, it's a very exciting piece of technology. It's got a long history. It's got a really interesting you know, future. Um, you know, what drives you with this? <laughs> Let's see what drives Chad. Um, well, I think Java is interesting. Um, so admittedly, now I've been a developer, um, entrepreneur for most of my career. So I started my first company um, almost over 20, I guess almost 20 some odd years ago. Um, and I've been in startups for most of my career. So formerly, I was a co-founder and CEO of my own company, Iron.io. Um, and so I've spent most of my career in technology, um, also programming, 
uh, but trying to bring new products to market, you know, trying to get attention, trying to find a market, trying to grow a market. Uh, and, you know, the interesting for me personally is, I mean, not only has Java had such an incredible uh, um, influence on the world of technology, but it's also uh, found in over 98% of the enterprise, at least for here in the US where um, I went to the job board to the Fortune 100, I found that 98 of them are hiring Java developers. Um, I like to say that Java powers the global GDP. Um, most stats that you look at, Java is the most ubiquitous uh, technology in the world, certainly by programming languages, and it drives most of enterprise IT uh, applications. So. The reason I say that is what's most interesting to me is, you know, I've gone from trying to bring new products to market to working with one of the most popular uh, technologies in the world. Um, and this is an interesting problem because, you know, certainly, you know, developer fashions change, developer styles change, hardware changes over time. So how do you take something that's so ubiquitous and, how, how do you evolve it over time? And how do you tell that story of evolution and innovation yet staying um, consistent and staying compatible with code that you wrote 25 years ago? Right. And these, this process of change for Java is so interesting to me. And then also the process for getting the word out about it is also interesting because most of the market, well, a lot of the market will say, oh, Java's slow to evolve. It's been around forever. Is it the next COBOL? Java's dead. <laughs> rah, rah, rah. If you, you know, find a dollar for every time, even I've heard Java is dead. Um, but the reality is it's more alive, more open, more free, um, more innovative than, than ever. Um, and a lot of that is due to the six month release cadence as well. So it makes my job easy because um, we're talking about new things every six months. We're releasing things into the hands of developers. And so that, so from a personal standpoint, that really drives me. And it's exciting to go to any conference and be able to talk to developers about Java and get their reactions. And then some of them, you watch them say, wow, there is a lot happening in Java. I'm going to take another look at it. You know, I'm going to choose it for my next application because now you know, there's a ton of benefit to choosing Java, um, but some people want, need to take a second look. So, yeah. And, you know, the last few Java conferences I've been to, I mean, there's a lot of young people walking around, you know, there, there's a lot of yeah. older people like me, but there's a lot of younger people walking around. So yeah, they are looking at it for the first time, re really looking at it for the first time. And yeah. so um, a lot of the people presenting um, at, you know, J focus in you know, Stockholm earlier in the year, you know, so this is a young developers, you know, and. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're right. And there's, there is a, a handoff to some degree to the next generation of developers as well. And Oracle being the steward of Java and being, you know, not only do we produce a majority of the code that goes into OpenJDK, which is the uh, OpenJDK is where Java is built, the open source, rep um, the reference implementation of Java. Um, and we contribute most of the code to that. Um, but we also steward many non-technical programs as well. And so, you know, to keep a healthy and vibrant community, to, to keep a healthy and vibrant ecosystem takes a lot of effort and there's a lot of things going on. And so part of that effort is ensuring that the next generation of Java developers are learning Java, are familiar with Java, um, and are hearing the story of Java rather than saying, you know, I'm going to use the programming language du jour um, because there's a lot of reason why. Because there's a lot of job security, a lot of job stability if you know Java coming out of high school, coming out of, of college. Um, and so if you watch the video from, uh, that we created for the May 20th event, um, you would have seen some younger students who are talking about how Java's moved them and how it keeps them excited about developing applications. And so we're going to continue to talk to students around the world. We're going to continue to feature those in stories for the rest of this year uh, and an ongoing basis. And, and we're excited about that. Cool. Sounds beautiful. Um, very exciting. All right, Chad, you have a very busy day tomorrow. Um, releasing a bunch of code and, and doing a big conference. So thank you very much for coming by. Appreciate it. Um, Chad Arimura um, from Java Engineering, VP of uh, Developer Relations. Uh, good luck, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thanks for having me, Jim.